Uh, good morning. I'm Sadie Liu from Wayne State University. And it's my great honor to be here to present our paper, Making Disk Failure Prediction Smarter. And this is a joint work between Wayne State University and Northeastern University. And this work is partially supported by the National Science Foundation. Um, Nowadays, hard disk drives continue to be the key driving factor of data centers. However, hard disk drives are one of the most frequently replaced hardware components, and they are also the main reason behind the server failures. And the failure of the hard disk drives can lead to the data loss, service unavailability, and the increase in the operational cost and economic loss. For example, in August 2018, a startup company named Front Edge found that the production data keeping in the Tencent cloud storage was uh, completely lost. And this incident resulted in the loss of around 10 million RMB of data, including the precise registration data of users as well as the content data. So for the startup company, it basically lost the Intel database that has been accumulating since its establishment. So therefore, it is necessary to conduct the disk reliability field studies so that the storage community can benefit from them. However, such field studies are not published often enough and are usually limited in the sample size. To bridge this gap, we conducted one of the largest disk failure analysis studies covering over uh, 380,000 HDDs uh, distributed across 10,000 server racks and uh, 64 data center sites over two months. And those disks are hosted by a large enterprise data center operator. And our final goal is to predict the disk failure accurately with long prediction horizon. So this is the first work that demonstrates the disk failure prediction can be highly accurate by combining three kinds of data sites. First is the disk performance data, such as the capacity, throughput related attributes. Uh, the second is the disk location data. Through the disk location data, we can know which disk is located at which server, which rack, which room, and which site. We also consider the disk monitoring data, which is self-monitoring, analysis, and reporting technology data. We call it as smart data. So traditional work only focused on the smart data, such as uh, correctable errors and disk spin up time, because the conventional knowledge believes that uh, smart attributes are indicative of disk failure, which holds true. But why we still consider other data? First, we find that smart attributes do not always have the strong predictive capability at known prediction horizon window for all disks. For example, uh, these two figures show the change in the value of the smart attributes during the 50-day period before the actual failure. And the y-axis represents the days before the disk failure, and the uh, y-axis represents the value of the corresponding smart attributes. We use a red color to represent the failed disk and use other color to represent the healthy disks. The failed disk and the healthy disks are located on the same server. And we find that the value of the smart attributes do not change frequently. And the change is often noticeable only a few hours before the disk failure. However, as to the performance data, we find that the value of performance metrics may present my, uh, more variations before the disk failure. So these two uh, graphs show the change in the value of the performance metrics within 50-day period before the actual failure. And we can see that the performance metrics of the failed disks show distinguishable behavior from healthy disks. So we believe that performance metrics can increase the coverage in capturing the workload characteristics beyond what smart attributes can cover. And besides, in our work, we also consider the disk location data, because we find that uh, disk failure prediction can be further improved by incorporating the disk location information. Because we find that 
disks in close location neighborhood are affected by the same environmental factors, such as the humidity and temperature. And they may even experience the similar vibration level. Although the vibration is not part of the smart attributes or the performance metrics, they are known to affect the reliability of disk drives. So adding location information may increase our coverage of the operating conditions of disks. And this slide shows the uh, selected smart attributes. And we selected a row value and a normalized value for the attributes. And I will illustrate later how we select those uh, informative smart attributes. Besides, we also selected the performance metrics, including the disk level performance metrics, as well as the server level performance metrics. As to the location data, uh, each disk has four levels of location markers associated with it, uh, site, room, rack, and server. And we should note that uh, the location markers just uh, capture the concept of the neighborhood. It do not indicate the actual physical distance between two disks, because the physical distance is not captured by our co location coordinates. Uh, next, I'm going to illustrate how we selected those informative attributes. First, we normalized all features using the min-max normalization. And then for a given feature, we set a series of threshold candidates with a step of uh, 0.01. And we calculated the corresponding J index. So the J index means uh, the summation of the true positive rate and true negative rate minus one. So this figure shows an example of the J index classification. Suppose the input feature is a uh, power on hours. And the, we use a red color to represent the field disk and the, use a blue color to stand for the healthy disk. And for the current threshold candidate, we calculate the true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. And based on the definition of the J index, we calculate the corresponding J index value. And, and a higher J index means it's more distinguishable to identify the field disk from the healthy disk. And the threshold candidate with the highest J index is selected as the best threshold. And in our work, we se select the features with the highest J index as the informative features. And these two tables shows the highest J index value for the smart attributes and the performance metrics. We can see that a single performance metrics has an overall higher J index value than a smart attribute, which indicates that performance metrics are likely to be predictive for disk failures. Then we figure out two patterns of the performance metrics shown in these figures and representing by the blue color and the red color respectively. So for a given server, we find the row value of a failed disk and we call it as a RFD uh, within the 240 hours before the actual disk failure. And then we calculate the value of all healthy disks called AHD. And we calculate the difference between RFD and AHD, which represents the difference between the signatures of the field and healthy disks on the same server. So the top two graphs shows that some field disks have the similar value to the healthy disk at first, but then the behavior becomes unstable. And the bottom two graphs shows that some field disk report some uh, sharp impulse before the fear, and this sharp impulse may repeat it several times. And to evaluate the effectiveness of our prediction approach, we choose precision, recall, f major, and the show correlation coefficient, called MCC in this work, to, as our effective measurements. And we employ five machine learning algorithms, including the Bayes classifier, random forest, gradient boosted decision tree, non short term memory network, and a convolution natural network with non short term memory. And we construct six groups using the different feature combinations to evaluate the effectiveness of the smart attributes S, performance metrics P, and location markers L. And this table shows the six groups of the SPL group, 
SL, SP, PL, S, and P. In the SPL group, we combine the smart attributes, performance metrics, and location markers to train the models. Similarly, in the SL, we exclude performance and keep the smart and location uh, and treat them as the input data set. So uh, in our work, we select the 10 day as our prediction horizon. Uh, which means that we aim to predict if a given disk will be filled within the next 10 days. And this is known enough for IT operators to conduct early countermeasures. And we also conducted some sensitivity study. And this figure shows the change in the value of the mean squared error and the derivative of the mean squared error for different prediction horizons. And we can see the derivative of the mean squared error reaches minimum on the 10th day. And the value of the mean squared error increases after 10 days. That's another reason that why choose the 10 day as our prediction horizon. And this slide shows our uh, experimental results of six groups by employing five machine learning algorithms. And based on the Experiment results, we have four interesting observations. The first is shows that uh, SPL group performs nearly the best across all machine learning models, which emphasize our performance, our assumption that performance and location features is able to improve the effectiveness of the disk failure prediction. And as to our second observation, so if we consider the SPL group and SP group which both have the performance um, metrics, we can see that without the location markers, it will need to 10% reduction for CNN LSTM in terms of the MCC evaluation. But if we compare the SL group and S group, which do not contain the performance metrics, the CNN LSTM achieved the similar result. So our second observation is that the improvement of adding location information is limited, and it only pronounced with the presence of the performance metrics. Uh, this is because the location information may help the machine learning models to amplify the hidden patterns of the performance metrics. So our third observation is that CNN LSTM uh, performs close to the best. Uh, so we can say it achieves the MCC score of 0.95 for the SPL group. The reason why we combine the CNN and LSTM together is that uh, previous work proved that LSTM could be further improved by taking better features as the input. So uh, this could be divided, provided by the CNN through the, uh, its dimensionality reduction. And our fourth observation is that we find there is a trade-off between the models with respect to the different availability of feature size. So if we do not have the performance and location data, we just have the smart data, we find that the traditional tree-based machine learning methods, such as RF and GBDT, can provide the equally accurate result, uh, like the complicated deep learning networks, such as the CNN LSTM and LSTM. Which means that if we just have the smart data, so no bother the DNN models. Then we have the further exploration. So we, pl we plot the false positive and false negative rates for different machine learning models and different feature groups. And the red color shows the false positive rate, and the yellow color shows the false negative rate. Observing the S group, we can see that the smart attributes-based models have a high uh, for selective rate across all models. And observing the SPL group, we can say that adding the performance and location features, uh, we can decrease the for selective rate, so the prediction quality can go up. Next, we want to investigate where the machine learning models perform poorly, and we want to say why. And this figure shows the location distribution of the disk affairs. Uh, each row represents a room, and each column represents a rack. And we use the gradient color from the yellow to red to represent the lower to higher failed disk percentage. 
and we use the dark blue color to highlight the mispredicted failures. And we can see that the mispredicted failures tend to occur in no failure location for all models. And this might be because the machine learning models are not able to collect enough uh, failed disk samples. So it emphasizes the need to add the location markers in disk failure prediction models. Next, we want to say when do machine learning models fail to predict and why. So those two pie charts shows the false positive and false negative characterized in 20-day window for CNN LSTM. And if we focus on the blue sector, we can say that the number of the false positive uh, rate is very low at the first 20-day window um, because it predicts many disks as healthy, although those disks are eventually indeed failed in that window. And this is uh, the reason why the failed uh, false negative rates uh, are high initially. And the reason might be the machine learning model do not have the enough data at the beginning, so it conservatively predicts the disk as healthy. So this observation emphasizes the need to have a long testing period before concluding the prediction quality. Then we want to test the probability of the prediction model across different data centers. We find that if we simply train the model on a single data set and port it to another, so the uh, disk fair prediction model may not work. However, we train the model on the 64 data sites and test it on the rest of the two sets, and this table shows the evaluation results. So we, see, we can see that the train, if we're training on the, if we train the models on the uh, multiple data sets, and then we can uh, easily port it to a new data set, and it can produce the reasonable accuracy. And if the portability is a requirement, uh, the CNN LSTM model is a better choice. Next, we want to say, um, is the model, is the prediction model effective with different prediction horizon? And this figure shows the change in the MCC value for different machine learning methods for the SPL group with a different uh, length of the prediction horizon. And we find the prediction quality indeed goes down with the increasing prediction horizon window, but the rate of the decrease is not steep for any model. Recall that we use the J-index classification for a feature selection, so we want to figure out that the J-index classification for feature selection will degrade the overall prediction if we train the model using all the features. And this figure shows the CNN LSTM evaluation results with the J-index classification and without the J-index classification. And we find they provide the similar quality result. So our suggestion is that we can use the J-index classification mm -hmm. to manage the storage overhead of storing attributes and without sacrificing the prediction accuracy significantly. So in conclusion, we conduct one of the largest disk failure prediction studies covering 380,000 hard disk drives across 64 sites of a leading commerce data center. And we find that performance and location attributes can improve the disk failure prediction. And we train the models, but we find no single machine learning model is a winner across all scenarios, but CNLSTM is fairly effective. And we train the models to the 0.95 F major and 0.95 MCC score for 10-day prediction horizon. And our prediction framework and data set up are public available. And if you have any questions or comments, you can also contact me. Thank you. Questions? Hi, Steve Silverman, uh, Datrium. A question, I wonder if location is actually a secondary indication of correlation to different drive models. So I'm, I'm wondering, did you look at whether the drive model would be a useful factor, maybe even more useful than location? Uh, you mean the disk manufacturer? 
uh, the, not just the disk manufacturer, but the specific model. So uh, assuming that different models of drives have significantly different failure rates, um, the, the idea of location may actually be just that certain racks are filled with one model of drive and other racks are filled with a different model of drive. Oh, so in our work, we didn't consider, or we treat the model information as well as disk manuf manufacturing information as one of the input features. But we do not build the specific models for a specific, uh, the machine learning model for a specific mm -hmm. disk uh, model for the disk manufacturer. For, because uh, first we normalize the data, so it filter out the uh, vendor specific uh, information. And also we find uh, if we train the models on the specific uh, model, the disk model, it may have some overfitting problem. And uh, because we want to test the portability of the model, machine learning model. So if we focus on the specific vendor, so it may not be uh, good to test the portability. And also manage multiple models may be difficult for the IT operators. So that's why we didn't consider that kind of information. Thank you. Peter Desnoyers, Northeastern. Um, again, I'll ask about the, uh, the location. I mean, just observing first that it would seem the obvious thing to do with that location failure information is just to empty out those racks, but, um, <clears throat> or to give them to someone else. And, uh, but, but the, do you know if there was any correlation between application and location? In other words, you know, if you, if you have large-scale applications across the data center, some of the machines may have been for the storage cluster, some for compute, and so on. Okay. Um, this is depends on our data set, because in our data set, we, ha we do not have the specific the workload information, but the performance metrics can reflect the workload, such okay. as the capacity and the throughput. So we do not have the specific uh, uh, information such as uh, workload A or, or workload B. Okay, I see. So in fact, that would get adding the location to the performance increased your precision, um, where the, the performance would have already given you the application. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. Uh, uh, Joe Wen from Daychain. So uh, I also have the question about the location information. So when you do the cross-site validation of your model. So do you assume that for the new site, um, you get all the failed disk information from that unseen site up to a time, and then predict failure? Or it's like you just don't know anything about that site, you just predict individual disk failure? Because it's hard for me to see how, I, I wonder if you give us some insight of how why the in, uh, location information will help if you don't know anything about uh, that new site? So, well, the location is useful because first it uh, can reflect the, uh, the environment factors. But for the, if you want to say why adding the location can improve the accuracy with the, uh, the existence of the performance metrics, uh, it may, be, it may uh, help a machine learning model to amplify the hidden part of the performance metrics because the disks in the uh, close location are more likely to have the same workload. And the, uh, as to the performance, it also reflects the, uh, the, the workload characteristics. So maybe adding the location can uh, help the machine learning model find the hard, hidden patterns of the performance of the workload characteristics. Hi, Doug Santrinan up. Um, I have a methodology question. Um, why did you choose the J index instead of PCA to perform feature selection? Does one have an advantage? Does J index do something interesting? Or? Oh, we, we did uh, use other methods such as uh, SVM and uh, also the PCA, but we, because it, based on our initial experiment result, it cannot get such good results. So we gave up such kind of a method and use the J index classification. So you actually decided um, empirically that you, could, you tried a couple of ways and found that JNDX right. worked. Okay, that's really right. interesting. Thank you. Great work. Thank you. Ralph Becker, Sandy of Google, formerly of IBM. Wonderful work. You would get my personal best paper award. 
One quick question. Mm -hmm. Did you consider drive temperature, which can be read through SMART as a predictor of failure rates? Just like Peter Desnoyer's questions, in my, my personal hunch would be that drive temperature and workload are very good predictors of failures. So did you consider temperature? Yes. It was selected in the SMART attribute. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just to add to that, uh, Juan from Amazon, I uh, just wanted to ask you, did you try to consider power events? Because for the hard drive, you know, power events are something that may be correlated to life. Uh, could you give me more description about the power events? Yeah, so how many work? times you restart the drive and things like that? Uh, did you consider that? Or? I think this information is already included in the smart attributes, uh -huh. uh, but we do not have uh, add other uh, the power event uh, attributes uh, okay. into our model. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Nick Carter at Cumulo. Um, as you mentioned, performance uh, characteristics can be indicative of the workload. Did you also find that you needed a particular workload to make the performance indicators useful to predicting failure? For example, if you had a high variability workload, does that negate any ability to see into or, or, or to make the prediction better of failure? Yeah, I think this is our, our, our future goal because we want to, we have the model right now and we want to figure out means a specific workload, uh, the relationship between the specific workload with the prediction result. So we want to do the mitigation. That's our next step. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is that our speaker again?